to Friday Night Lights. More high school football to get to as we head down to Crawford County yet again. And this time, another big matchup for at least Cochranton. Let's hit some Region 2 action. First between unbeaten Cochranton and Sagertown. And those Cardinals trying to stay unbeaten on the season. Pick things up in the second quarter. And Cochranton leading by two scores. Steven Martinek capitalizing on the drive with a 10-yard touchdown run. Cardinals leading 22 to nothing. Panthers looking to respond, but Sully Zirkel's pass is going to be picked off by Blake Folk. Nice job getting both hands underneath the ball. Yes, indeed, that's an interception. Moments later, Martinek breaks the single-season school rushing record in the first half. Congratulations to him, and of course, plenty of more yards to come. Still a lot of football to be played this season. Early portions of the second half, Martinek putting the game out of reach. Here he rips off a 61-yard touchdown run. Nobody's going to track them down. Cochranton rolls 37 to nothing over Sagertown. They are now 7 and 0 on the season. Back to Southern Erie County we go for Cambridge Springs at Union City. Blue Devils with the ball and on the move. Van Jones with a long run coming up here and he's going to come right at us as he's going to go on the near sideline before getting forced out of bounds, but not before picking up a first down for Cambridge Springs a few plays later. Garrick Hodak punches it in from 1 yard out. Boy, those are some tough Tough yards right there, even if it was just for one yard. Cambridge Springs goes on to beat Union City. They do it on the road, 33-18. to 18. Best hair in D10, too. To no guys, doubt. Mills, Maplewood, and Eisenhower in a rock fight. 7-3, Tigers led it at the half. Knight to the ball in the third. Sean Pascuzzi back to pass. He gets dumped for the loss, and the fumble on the play results in Maplewood's Ben Gilberto recovering for the Tigers. Dominic Kimmy back to pass for Maplewood. He's sacked. Tucker Lindell for the Knights making the defensive play here. I wasn't lying. Ike now back on offense inside the Maplewood 40. Pascuzzi on a screen sets it up for a pickup of 13 yards to Wyatt Lookenhouse. Eisenhower now lining up for a field goal try right before the end of the third quarter, but Jim Penley's Knights pull the trick play. It's Lookenhouse throwing open. It's Jacob Jakubzak for the touchdown here. Makes it 9-7. to Eisenhower would score once more and hang on to beat Maplewood. 15 to 7 in Guys Mills. Other D10 scores Butler handling Franklin at home 60 to 8, as did Farrell over Kennedy Catholic 76, 78 to 6, I should say. Wilmington over Mercer 41 26. Sharpsville getting the better of Reynolds 21 to 7 for Saturday's high school football slate. Two games. Fairview originally a 7 o'clock kick, now a 1 p.m. kick from Keck Field against Titusville. Erie on the road at Oil City taking on the Oilers. At 7 o'clock, local college football Saturday schedule for you. Edinburgh and Gannon, rivalry action at noon from McConnell Family Stadium. Mercier is hosting number 17, Slippery Rock at noon. In Division 3, Allegheny hosts DePaul at 1 o'clock from Meadville. In Division 1, 7th ranked Penn State hosting Illinois at noon, while 23rd ranked Pitt hosting unranked Clemson at 3.30 in the afternoon. Women's College Volleyball at Edinburgh University tonight. Fighting Scots hosting Clarion at McComb Fieldhouse. Opening set here for the home team. Michaela Clunan with the nasty put away here. And she'll score one for the home team. Then on the Edinburgh serve, Carly Pry recording the ace here. And then moments later, it'll be Abby Mon with the soft touch and the kill as Edinburgh goes on to sweep the Golden Eagles with scores of 25 19, 26 24, and 25 to 18. And after beginning the regular season on the road with the first four games, the Erie Otters finally make their home debut on Saturday night. And by the time they drop the puck against Saginaw, it'll have been 594 days since an Ontario Hockey League game occurred at the Erie Insurance Arena. On Friday afternoon, the club held their final practice before their home opener. And for the Otters captains, being back playing hockey and the anticipation of playing on home ice is beyond exciting. We've been waiting for this for such a long time and you know having to sit through two home openers on the road it's really nice to get in front of our crowd and, and back in our own building. What's it like playing here? Amazing. One of the best crowds in the league for sure. Um, obviously when you go around the league and, and you see other crowds and you know nothing really compares to how rowdy it is in here and, and um, obviously when we're winning it's an amazing atmosphere. It's been such a long time coming but how great is it to just be back competing, being out with other organizations? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, you know, a lot of us haven't had this competitive nature in so long, and it's what we live for, right? This competitive, you know, being a hockey player, so, and playing hockey games, trying to win, so getting back into that's been great. How anxious is this group to be finally skating on home ice? Uh, we're, we're anxious, we're excited, you know, we just got to try and contain that as best as possible for uh, Saturday night. You know, the fans get really behind us, and they give us that extra energy to, you know, propel us to a win, and it, it feels awesome, you know, to have that support behind us. 
Once again, it's the Erie Otters making their regular season home debut Saturday night from the Erie Insurance Arena. Game time versus Saginaw is at 7 p.m. Mercyhurst women's hockey was at Cornell, and the Big Reds playing their season home opener as well. And the Lakers getting game one of this weekend series in a via upset victory, 3-2. to two. Mercyhurst with two third-period goals, including Sarah Boucher's game winner on a power play tally midway through the third period.